how much should I be making in my early 30s? Mm. And then if I'm not at that point, Hmm. Right? How do I ask for a raise? I think this is a question that a lot of people would want to know. If you want to take a bit more of an accurate number, I would suggest people to speak to people about their salaries. Yeah. Oh, you brought up a topic that <laughs> I want to ask you about. Like, is it okay to talk to people about my salary? Welcome to Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about all the big stuff in adulthood like relationships, self-identity, career, finance, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast is for it to bring comfort and help you to feel just a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. And today, if you are watching the video podcast, you would notice that we are in a very different place. You might hear a little bit of background noise because we are in the outdoors. And more importantly, I actually have a guest over here on my podcast. So this is the first guest episode that we have here on Small Girl Big Talk. And I'm really, really excited about it because I have my friend Ellen over here. Ellen, maybe you can introduce yourself a little bit about what you do. Then I'll tell them why you are here. <laughs> so good to be here. And thank you, Wendy, for inviting me here. Um, so my name is Ellen. I am a holistic career coach. I help corporate Asian women to quit their boring, meaningless jobs uh, into their next five-year career focused on progression, purpose, and well-being. And this has been my mission of mine, my purpose, and I'm so excited to bring my experience, skills, knowledge to your guests and audience, Wendy, and so happy to be here. Yes. So like the reason why I wanted to bring Ellen here today, right, is because when it comes to adulting, career is a big chunk, a very important part of it. But at the same time, I don't feel like I am qualified to talk about it. Um, I mean, because I'm someone just like everyone's listening right now. I have a lot of questions that I'm not too sure about. Mm. And that's why I wanted to bring someone like you who actually coaches people to like change and transition in their career into something that they want. You're the best person to ask all these questions that I feel stupid about. Aww. <laughs> I mean, I started off feeling like I didn't, I wasn't qualified to. Yeah. So I just want to share a bit of my, my back, background of how yes. I became a career coach. Um, I was actually just helping friends out for free. I uh, realized that they were asking me, oh, how did you make this career change? What really gave you the confidence to do it? And, you know, is there anything that I should know? And then I realized I was starting to help friends like back to back. <laughs> and then I was like, hey, um, that this is something that maybe I can do as a living. Um, and then I thought of becoming a fitness coach first. So I actually started uh, a training program with a spin studio and I was actually like knees in deep and it was very fulfilling but then the pandemic hit and then we couldn't continue our training and during that time I think I watched this video online and realized hey maybe I want to be a life coach not a fitness coach mm -hmm. and so then I thought about the stuff that I've done with my friends before and also with um with the intention of becoming a coach, and you kind of put like pieces together and I'm like, hey, why don't I become a career coach? So that's kind of like how I started as a career coach. And um, what was your question again? Oh, you were just telling okay. us uh, telling <laughs> us about your background, right? So I think then that's a good transition because you were saying that you were helping a lot of your friends yeah. with their career changes, you were saying, right? Yeah. And I guess the question that I have for you is because I think I'm at a stage where I just entered my early 30s mm. and I feel like I approach career a little bit different now. And maybe we can start by having a conversation about what do you think the main differences are between career in your 20s and career in your 30s? Mm, I think for me personally, and just based off my experience coaching my clients as well, so I coach clients between the ages of like 25 to even above 40. And I would say a lot of the differences are not so much within the age itself. I think it's more about what you go through in life between those years. So I have my personal, personally, in my 20s, I was still kind of just figuring out who I was. 
I wasn't sure about my skill sets, my strengths. I was still very, I was still people pleasing a lot. Mm. I was still having lots of bouts of imposter syndrome. I was still not very knowledgeable when it comes to things like how do you manage your boss? How do you manage your colleagues? How do you manage people? Uh, how do you ask for a salary raise, right? Yeah. And I think, I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to know all these things in our 20s, but we, we didn't learn this from anyone. Like college, university didn't teach us. And we're very fortunate to have Instagram to be able to show all this information now. But back then, we didn't really have that much resource. But then you fast forward to 30s, you basically have like 10 years to figure it out and trial and learn. And I think when you build a little bit more confidence, you also kind of share those information with friends. You talk about it more, you're more open. Um, and then you slowly also learn about yourself and you figure it, hey, this is something that I could maybe venture into a bit more. You're more certain about your own skill sets. So I think the transition between 20 to 30s for me personally was really kind of diving deeper into who I was and creating a foundation for myself. But I also want to just caveat and say that even if it's, this is my journey, it does not mean that everyone goes through the same thing. Again, it depends on background and, and even my own clients, right? There are some of them who are much older than I am, but may, perhaps they went through a difficult time in their jobs and maybe they, didn't, they weren't so fortunate to have support system like I did. And so I think the age is one part of it. I think what matters is like what you have been through in your life and whether you have support system. And I guess we can talk about that a bit more. Yeah. 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 Like I was just thinking between the difference between like your story and versus mine. Right. Mm -hmm. I felt like when it comes to coming closer to like my early 30s mm -hmm. compared to my 20s, right? I feel like 20s was when I was like you, I was exploring what I want mm -hmm. and I was a little bit more reckless in my career journey. Like I didn't... Reckless? I, reckless <laughs> in a way, like I've never really looked at the long-term journey mm -hmm. where I just like focus on, okay, what do I feel like learning now? What do I feel like doing now? Mm -hmm. Then I just get into it. But at the same time, I do have, like I did have my own sets of limiting belief on not having confidence in my own strength in what yeah. I want to do, um, which is why like I settled for like safer career choices in my early 20s, just because I felt like, oh, that's what everyone is doing. That's what I should be doing too. And then by my mid-20s, then I started venturing into entrepreneurship because mm. that's when I realized like, oh, I made for so much more than just settling for a safe like corporate-ish job. I was mainly in startups. Um, but then when it comes to 30s, I think because... I'm I'm at that age where like I am you know preparing for marriage and slowly settling more into life and then this is when I start to feel like oh should I be making more than I'm making um, how do I ask for a raise like as compared to my peers am I doing all right I think I start to have a lot more of these kind of questions where I'm like I think there's a lot of like concerns and worries about like am I doing all right. Mm. Like, it's more a lot of, like, self-check about yeah. where I am now in my journey. And I think that's why I wanted to have this topic uh, today. And, like, the, the theme that I said is really, like, the career questions that we have in our 30s. Mm. And, and, like, you, you touched on this just now. And I just have to ask, like, let's just see it right into it, right? At our 30s. Okay, there's two things that I want to ask. I want to know, how much should I be making in my early 30s? Mm. And then, if I'm not at that point. Hmm. Right? How do I ask for a raise? I think this is a question that a lot of people would want to know. Yeah, great question and something that I struggled personally with. I think the first thing to talk about again is where are you at in terms of your career? Are you at a stage where you're happy or unhappy? Uh, what I tend to find is with happy, with people who are happy in their careers, they tend to perform better. And people who are maybe unhappy can still perform, but they end up burning themselves out. And as a result, they may not get to where they want to be. So I think that will be kind of my first checkpoint. Are you happy or not unhappy? Now, of course, if you want to talk about performance, then it comes to whether you are utilizing your skill sets to the maximum, 
whether you are in a position where you have advocates within the company to advocate for you. Mm -hmm. And finally, I think it's about your own progression path. So, for instance, if you are currently a analyst and you're happy with your job and you have a good boss, right? But if you're at a stage where you're not sure about the next progression path or it's not clear for you, then perhaps it's quite difficult to see what the next level is for you. So when it comes to salary raise, I think a big part is to tie in with your progression. Mm -hmm. Whether you have this specific uh, level or rank in the company where you can climb up to. And what comes with that is also your responsibilities, right? I think people think that salary is something that needs to be paid based on how long you've been working there. But you need to also consider that employees will want to pay you more when they see you delivering the performance. Firstly, secondly, is on the um, responsibility, responsibilities that you're taking on. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing that I would suggest um, people to think about when it comes to a salary raise is when you want to go into a discussion on salary, it doesn't have to be something that you do at the end of the year end review. You might feel like, okay, usually your boss will ask you about your performance at the end. But progression, responsibilities is a long-term journey. You have to think about your career as like a, like a start to the end. You don't just perform towards your year-end review or take on more responsibilities till, until you get the review. But you have to set yourself up for success throughout the year. So it's about having that list of career wins at the end of your career at the end of your review to be able to say to your boss like hey this is this is what I've done in the past year and this is what I would like to discuss about so I started off with first talking about whether there's a potential for you to progress mm -hmm. and that comes with opportunity and then the second part is whether you have that ability to take on responsibility and then finally is about whether you have been thinking whether you have been intentional in your career journey to see okay, these are the wins that I've achieved this year and what you can discuss with your boss about. Again, not, you don't have to do it like at the year end. You can always do it throughout the year. So oh. I think most people probably don't have these steps down. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to salary negotiation, they get afraid and fumble. I think once you come into the salary negotiation prepared, then it's more effective that way. Okay, so because you were saying that we don't need to wait till like the year-end review time to talk about this, right? Yeah. How would you initiate this conversation with your boss then? Because yeah. I'm someone who is very, I don't know what's the right word in English, very Pisces mm. when it comes to fighting for myself in my career. Yeah. Um, because I think the culture of the company that I'm working in, it's a lot of like, you know, like, I'm learning a lot in my job and I'm exposed to a lot of people and a lot of network in my job. It's almost framed as if that working in this company is a privilege. But at the same time, I also need to fight for my own right, right? Mm. How would you suggest I go about initiating this conversation for a career review? I, I think it's a very common Asian thing. I think when, since young, when we ask our parents for allowance, it's like a huge no-no as well, right? <laughs> like, you know, why do you want to like get a three ringgit uh, allowance instead of two ringgit. I think we don't really ask that and we get punished for asking more. So very, very common amongst Asian, um, Asians to have this like, apprehensive to ask for salary. And the second thing is you, you're afraid that, you know, if you ask for a salary, that means you're ungrateful. Yeah. Right. So a lot of things to unlearn there. Mm. Uh, and that's the kind of work that I do with my clients. But when it comes to the right time to ask for a salary raise, I think it, it all boils down to two things. Do you have a regular meeting with your reporting manager? And number two, do you have your career wins list with you? If you have these two things and you have in your career wins list have done this amount of impact, then you have what I call as leverage, right? 
I'm, I'm talking about a context of like you're still within the company and you, you're not looking for a career change. It's not a salary negotiation for career change. I'm talking about within a company, how would you get promoted is to have that career wins list and that one-on-one session. So in those one-on-one sessions, what I usually do with my own manager, and I recommend this to my clients and everyone and you guys as well, make sure you go into this meeting and doing 90% of the talking. Right? You don't want to be there asking your manager of like, what, what should I do in this case? Like, can you teach me these things? I think that is okay, like 10% of the time. But you want to go into the meeting already having your wins list and say like, okay, last week, these are the things that I did to help the company, to help team, to help you. And, and these are the things that I'm working on, right? So every week, you can imagine that if you're updating your boss this way about what you've done every single week, in their minds, they will know that this, this person that I'm hiring, she's delivering so much. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to when is the right time then when you kind of build that up is whether you have a... S- slightly significant career win. For example, it could be I've launched a specific project that has brought us in this much of revenue or this project has saved us this amount of money. Can we discuss about maybe perhaps increasing my salary? Or can we just maybe discuss about what's the next progression path for me and what's the timeline to get there? You don't have to ask straight away like I want this percentage, right? You can always discuss about hey, boss, can I just talk to you about what that looks like? So I think if you have those two kind of pillars in place, it won't feel like it's a sudden thing. You won't feel like you're just surprising your boss in a way. They've already kind of expected this girl to ask because she's already been performing so well. Yeah. Okay, and like, what would you say it's a normal range of salary, salary increment? Yeah, that's a good question. I think in Malaysia specifically... Okay. Uh, most companies would, I think most large companies would give an increment of about 3 to 5%. So this is supposed to cover the inflation that we yeah, have. Yeah, I think that's the most important <laughs> thing. I'm like, I need that because literally everything else is getting so expensive. Yeah, so I think most companies would, would have that kind of standard policy. But again, this is not, this is not all companies. You have to also uh, have a check with your company about it. When it comes to what's the right amount to ask, I would firstly think about doing your own market research. And market research can be in many different forms. The first thing that I would suggest you to do is the lowest risk, right? Because most of us are already quite uncomfortable talking about salary. So I would say the lowest risk to salary research is uh, just going online. There's a lot of platforms out there that has salary transparency numbers. So you can Google, say, a client account manager role, how much that usually pays. Uh, I think there are websites called like payskill.com, salary.com. And then sometimes like um, Job Street, which is a Malaysian platform, you do see the salary range there. So that's kind of the lowest risk to go about it. Um, but if you want to take a bit more of an accurate number, I would suggest people to speak to people about their salaries. Yeah, oh, you brought up a topic that I want (laughs) to ask you about. Like, is it okay to talk to people about my salary? Yeah, um, I think, again, it's something that we're not used to. Yeah. And you probably don't want to, like, publicize your salary on, like, a podcast (laughs) or, like, online anywhere uh, with your name because sometimes most companies have actually non-disclosure clauses mm. right in your contract and you might want to check that out after this <laughs> whether you have that in your in your contract um, it might be a kind of personal and confidential it might be a confidential information for the company so okay. you don't want to reveal that publicly but if it, if it's within friends if it with if it's within like a networking event um, then it's okay to share right you don't also have to give like a specific number so what you could do is Say, hey, Wendy, you know, I'm currently going through a salary readjustment phase with my boss. Uh, I know that you're in this specific position. It's kind of like parallel to mine, um, but maybe you are at a step higher. I would just really love to know like what you're currently earning right now, just on average. You don't have to tell me the real number. I'm 
under, I would understand if you're uncomfortable to share because of these non-disclosure clauses. But it would really, really help me to know like how much you're earning so that I can know what I can discuss with my boss next week. So if you talk about it that way, it's not like too much of a shock to the person who is being asked that question. But at the same time, you can also give yourself some room to just explore what that number is. So market research through online, yes. Secondly, through people. And the third thing, which I think most people don't really utilize that much, is to speak to recruiters, right? Recruiters are people who are constantly looking for potential hires in the space. And they already know how much that company is willing to pay. They have a salary range in mind. So when you speak to recruiters, you could basically say, hey, I'm looking for this specific job. Um, what do you think is the amount that I should be asking? And recruiters will help you because they only get paid when you get hired. <laughs> so yeah, these three things would be the ones that I would suggest you to try out. Okay, but like if I've never been approached by a recruiter, right? Mm. Where do I go find them? Yeah, so I think most people don't come across recruiters unless you are headhunted on a specific platform. Yeah. Um, but these recruiters are everywhere. There's actually so many recruitment companies in Malaysia. Um, you can literally just Google on, on Google recruitment um, agencies in Malaysia and you would see a whole bunch. And they actually list down their recruiters uh, database on their website. So you could see that this person is recruiting for this industry and they also give you the email address, right? That's the first way. Um, the second thing is LinkedIn is a great place to connect with people nowadays. Yeah. So you really want to just see, recruit, just type a recruiter, location is Malaysia or whatever you're based. And then from there, reach out to them on LinkedIn and just say, hey, I'm looking for a career change. Like, and this is what I would like to find out more about. So they're actually really, really easy to engage with. Um, so yeah. Try those things. Yeah, I think, I mean, like, I didn't do my research. I'm quite happy at my current job. <laughs> so I wasn't really, like, looking into recruiters' contact and all that. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's good to know. Um, I think we've covered quite a good chunk about, like, ra like, rising into where you want, like, in terms of, like, increment or I think promotion, it will be mm. a very similar approach as well. Mm. So then now I want to talk a little bit more about career change, mm. which is where you really help your clients with as well, right? Like when do you know it's time for you to leave a company and mm. go for something else? Yeah. So I think there's like two main things um, that I would tell my clients to consider. The first thing is... Just now I mentioned about a happy or unhappy. I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Your career is just really just one part of your life. And if you're so, un so unhappy in your career that you're unhappy in your life, uh, that should be a huge signal for you to say, maybe I need to think about something here. And within the unhappy kind of bucket, you also have two branches. Are you just unhappy but overall well? Or are you unhappy and just really, really burnt out? Mm -hmm. And so when I talk about burnout, um, it's something that we are still maybe learning how to identify. And I don't know if you have like experiences with burnout as well. But burnout for me was I was starting to lose my hair. Right? I was losing chunks of, chunks of my hair. No. I know. It was That's horrible. so scary. <laughs> yeah. And I've heard like different people have different issues. Um, you might have skin problems like rashes that doesn't recover. Yeah. Those are actually physical signs of burnout, right? Yeah. Uh, so, did you like have something? Um, I think I did. Uh, I, I started um, developing eczema. Yeah. Yeah. So For skin me, issues, skin yeah. issues. And I remember going to the skin doctor. I'm like, this is all new to me. I don't mm. know what's happening. He's like, I think you're just really stressed out at your work. Like, because he mm. asked me a lot of questions and it all just pointed out to my lifestyle and the stress level that I was facing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's when like I realized like, okay, I'm literally getting physical signs that yeah. like, hey, SOS, you need to do something about your life. So, yeah. so I went through that as well. Yeah. And very common, one very common burnout sign is also like your periods. Ooh. Right. Yeah. If you're like 20, 30s, you probably have like semi-regular periods. Okay, that's fine. But if your periods are like stopping for three months you know i have like people that i work with who didn't have their periods for three months because they were so burnt out yeah. like these are really important signs that you have to take note of and yeah. and so when it comes to the unhappy bucket of you just had unhappy without um with this job but burnout i would say in the burnout category this is important you gotta hear this it's okay to quit without a job if you have savings 
Right? When you're burnt out, it's very, very hard to make a career change because career change is something that you have to spend time and energy on mm. and it requires you to meet people. Right? If you're so tired, you're losing your hair, your period is delayed, you just need to give yourself that love and care <laughs> just to recover and heal. I personally took... Um, I personally quit without a job before and I spent about four to six months just recovering and it was like the best thing ever. And I actually did, I actually do encourage my clients to do that as well. When I see them in a stage where they are not capable of finding a new job immediately, the work that we do together is actually to encourage them to have the courage to build the savings and then to quit their jobs to heal. Now, if you're in the first category of you're just maybe like not so happy because the job is not so aligned to what you do. So you, let's say like Wendy, she's a very bubbly person, right? Mm-hmm. And she's very joyful. She speaks really well. But let's say she's in a job where she's just, you know, on her computer and talking to no one, just writing reports, <laughs> you know? That sounds so depressing. <laughs> yeah, so that's like a really um, misaligned job for you. It does not, doesn't utilize your strengths and personality. Uh, doesn't come out that much. So in that sense, I would call it a misaligned burnout. In that, in that case, maybe you would have some capacity to look for career change separately. Um, so I'll talk about unhappy and happiness already. Um, the other thing that is really important to consider is the progression, yeah. right? If you're in a space where the company is doing well, but not giving you the opportunities to progress, mm. or your managers are not listening to your wants and needs, your career goals and not aligning or at least finding opportunities to align for you, then there's really no way for you to progress anymore, right? And the final thing that's most important is, are you growing in the, in the job? Mm. <laughs> if everything is like so boring, you know, everything is like something that you can do so easily that you don't feel challenged, and then that's really, really a time for you to consider a career change. Yeah, I think... When, Wendy is like thinking about her career I now. know, no, 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 no. I mean like, because... Like like I said earlier, like I've generally been quite happy with my job because there's progression. Like I'm just reviewing my own experiences based on what you've mentioned. I was like, okay, am I happy or not? Or am I just burned out? Or you've you know, made career changes, right? In the I've, past. I've made career changes yeah. too. And for me, I went from being a content marketer um, in a startup where I was just creating content for. Um, the companies um, to currently, <laughs> I'm I'm trying to like thinking I'm, I'm thinking how to describe what I'm doing right now because <laughs> I feel like my current job scope it's very wide because I'm a chief of staff to my CEO right so my job pretty much covers everything um, that a CEO would do kind of thing. Like I, I kind of oversee the operations, I oversee new projects and stuff like that. So, um, but for me to experience that change, right, at that point, it was quite a funny story. So from being a content marketer, I was really, really unhappy with my job because I couldn't see the career progression. Mm. I, at that point of my life, I had a vision that in the future, I want to be a mum. Yeah. Okay. And I couldn't. And and the only career growth that I can see. Were you burned out that time? I was not really burned out. Yeah. I was actually filled with energy. I can do side hustle on 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 my own. Um. But when I decided to leave was when I realized that if I want to be a mom one day, I want to have a flexible career arrangement. Mm. I don't want to be just going into the office nine to five in Malaysia. It's like nine to six, Mm. and then not being able to have time for my kids in the future. Mm. So I just knew that I want to have flexibility. And that's how I got into the whole entrepreneurial space because I want time freedom. Mm. You know, it's not specifically um, in terms of the money that I make, but it's also like the freedom in terms of the time and the things that, that I can do. That was about your future happiness. Yes, that's for my future happiness, right? And for me, the story is quite funny because I didn't have the courage to quit. Mm. And I'm a... I'm, somewhat of a religious person I'm Christian and and the funny story is this there was one night that I went to a prayer session Mm -hmm. and I really prayed my heart out and telling God like God I really don't like this job what do I do next just give me a sign whatever sign is good and the next day my ex-boss called me into his office and he told me that they have to let me go (gasps) whoa at that point right 
on on the surface, I look kind of like serious to my boss, but in my heart, I was just like, "Wow, God, you are real, huh? Mm. Like you're literally just telling me what I should do. I should just leave." At that point, I had no plans what to do yeah. next, but I knew it was the right thing to do. Like, I mean, I had no choice. I was literally let go. Um, but I was somewhat forced into exploring what I want to do. And I took... It was a kick in the butt. It was literally, <laughs> yeah, Like a kick in the butt. Um, and I, I had some sort of savings at that point. It wasn't a lot, but it was enough to not feel afraid for that next two months that like, oh my God, I don't have a fixed income coming in. Mm. And at that point, I was also doing side hustles already. So I knew like... I have ways to make money when I, I wasn't too worried about finances. Mm. So I also gave myself that time to really buy time to figure out what I want to do next. And then somehow one thing led to another and then I got to where what I'm doing right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean like sometimes you get certain life events that really push you through its career change and that's also you know part of the first thing that I mentioned unhappy or happy. I've have client I've had clients who really was pushed through as a career change because they actually lost a family member. Yeah. And that is a really really heartbreaking moment, but also very enlightening because it reminds you that life's so short. Mm. Right? If you're so unhappy right now and you have a family man- member that passed, it reminds you that you have to go after your future happiness and that's what Wendy did, right? Or it could be that, you know, like Wendy said, she was planning for motherhood and I've had a lot of friends or also clients who are married, don't have kids, but they're already so tired and so burnt out. And so when they think about kids, it almost cripples them and they are wondering like whether they want to have kids or not. And so that becomes like you're cornered into a position to decide either or and and sometimes you might need to prioritize family and put career aside and that's totally okay. I think we all talk about women can do it all, yes, but not all at once. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you want to also be able to see, yes, I want to go after my career progression now, but five years from now, maybe I want to prioritize my family and how can my career fit into that picture, right? Um, and the last thing that I think most people go through in terms of life event is when they see, like they have this kind of awakening. It's going to be a, a bit of a spiritual part here, but Wendy and I talk about this sometimes. Um, when you have this deep, deep sense of not being fulfilled, when you feel like there's something just calling out to you and you just don't know how to access that, And there are signs everywhere, as you said, you know, um, there's a job posting that reaches out to you and say like, would you want to be uh, trying for this job? So many signs that are kind of like calling out to you and say, hey, 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 wake up, wake up. Um, That's also a very important signal to catch. Uh, Personally, that's what I uh, face as well. So during my first career change, I was, I went through a... I was going through an ex- a death anxiety. So what that means is I was a very I was confronted with my own death. Yeah. And and at that time it was really tough, right? I didn't know how to deal with that. I went for therapy for that. But during that time I realized that it was a an awakening for me cuz I imagined myself going to my job every day. And you can think about this too. Can you imagine yourself waking up today and next and tomorrow what if you realize that you only have 2 months left? Then at that time, I kind of thought, hey, I don't want to spend my last few days doing this kind of work, right? Yes, you want to spend time with your loved ones and that's so important, but you also want to think about what is your impact in this life? Mm-hmm. And so at that time, I was, was very certain that I just don't want to do this anymore. Then the day itself, I started looking for a new job. So a spiritual awakening might be something that you're going through and definitely listen to it. Yeah, and I really think like this whole career thing, right? Mm. It's really not just a very black and white thing. Mm. Um, Like you said, like 
career also spans into like your own spiritual growth and like your own emotional health and your relationships with people as well. I think like quite a common struggle that I heard about when it comes to corporate especially is like the toxic environment um, in work as well, right? So I guess like I'm just chiming in to say that with with when it comes to our career, it's good to actually tune in to how you feel about the job and are you actually observing if there are any signs around to help you to make the decision on how to move on from where you are right now? Yeah, I think the tuning in part is so difficult also. Like yeah. we have so many distractions nowadays. Mm-hmm. You have technology is one, but the distraction of technology is probably like the majority of the distractions that we have now, <laughs> right? Um and so it's really, really hard to tune in, but it's still a practice that we all have to do. Yeah. Not just for our careers, but, you know, everything else around our career. And personally, for me, how I ensure that my career serves me is whether it allows me the space to tune in. Mm. Right? If you are in a career where you are constantly tuning out, that's a recipe for burnout. Yeah. Yeah, so like doing what I do, coaching my clients is one of the ways that reminds me to always tune in. Um, in my other full-time job, I'm also a regional manager. It also requires me to tune in a lot because we are also strategizing how do you create success for the countries that I'm managing right now. And it requires a lot of thinking and tuning in. And when I deal with clients, I got to think about, okay, what is, what is the client thinking about? And I have to empathize with them as well. So that tuning in should be a part of your career. And, and yeah, I, I hope more people are aware of this. And I think there is a, an awakening happening collectively now. Perhaps now the next steps is to build up that courage to just explore. <laughs> yeah, I, interesting you said that. Like, because in a way, coaching is kind of like, a secondary thing on top of your day job but it's also like a main thing Um, and for me as well like having this podcast it's what allows me to also think about the bigger life questions outside of my day job which helps me to like I guess have a better picture of what I want in my career also and I think we're both very lucky in a sense that we were able to kind of find this thing that we are doing right now that allows us to also tune in and and get into you know thinking about our career in in different ways yeah yeah and and wendy was also kind of dabbling into coaching a bit right yep like i think the last time you told me was you decided it wasn't so aligned with like who you are yeah i think the audience might want to know like what made you make that change okay so right um remember i was just telling you guys that when i got laid off that's when i realized that oh i want to go through the entrepreneurship route because that is going to give me the flexibility but that is also based on the understanding of what i knew at that point of my life i was in my mid-20s and that was when the entire entrepreneurship internet is like all about coaching And coaching was really huge at that point. That was right before the pandemic, like 2019. And then, you know, when pandemic happened, everyone had to do something online and the whole coaching thing became big. And I also ended up working in a job that kind of manages coaches and trainers, which allows me to really dabble deep into this industry, knowing how it works, how do you make money doing it, And that was the season where I was a social media coach doing everything, right? And because I knew the ins and outs of the industry, I knew how to make money. Um, But at the same time, I was so focused on all the strategies and the metrics that I felt like, hey, there's a little bit of misalignment with who I am as a person. Because the reason that I got into this whole industry to begin with, right, it's because... I've always loved being a content creator since I was like 14 years old. Um, I started blogging since then and it didn't stop. And then I got into YouTube. You were in YouTube, yeah. Yeah, and then I was on YouTube too. And then, but in the process of like selling myself as a coach, 
I really lost the creative side of myself because all I was focusing on is on how can I promote myself better as a coach so that I can make enough money. So I really lost touch of that me, like the me that is able to create content that can inspire people, that thought-provoking content that can make people think. That's what I actually really enjoy doing. And it took me a while to really realize that what I thought at that point was what I wanted was actually not what I wanted. It's like a... It's quite tough to accept that lah because you made this huge statement that, hey, this is who I am. I tied that into my, my identity. And I think that's very huge when we... Sometimes we end up taking whatever we were doing in our career as our self-identity when in fact we are a lot more than just our job title. So it took me a while to really accept that, okay, this is actually not exactly what I want to do. Like, I still enjoy doing it. I might come back to it. But at this stage of my life, I realized that there's more to it that I want. And I needed to take a step back to get back into content creation before I eventually feel like maybe I'm, I feel ready to be a coach again. Yeah, like interesting that you talk about identity because actually that's also a big struggle that a lot of my clients face when it comes to career change um, and, and you might resonate with this is when you've spent like your whole of your 20s pursuing career growth progression promotion it becomes so much of your identity that it's you and the career as one but then a lot of the work that I do with my clients is from like 30s or 40s is you have to dissociate yourself from your career because your career identity is just one and an identity can always change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the part too. Like I went from, you know, identifying as a coach to identifying as a content creator and a podcaster now as well. Yeah. And if you can dissociate yourself from the identity, then you can also play around with it. Yeah. And I think... Personally, for me, I would want to have more than one identity because that's just more fun. <laughs> yeah. I, I also need to like remind you guys as well, like I am in my early 30s. Me, we both are in our early 30s. And like you guys who are listening might be in our 20s, 30s, 40s. I still feel like we are very young. Like if we were to, if we are so lucky that we can live till like 80 years old, right? We are still not even at the halfway mark. So why not play with different identities? Yeah, like if you've always thought of yourself as an introvert. Okay, mm. le let me just give you a very personal example. I always thought I was an extrovert. Oh, like okay. In my 20s, I was like, you know, going out, partying a lot <laughs> and uh, just a social butterfly. I knew everyone. I thought I was extroverted. So I looked for jobs that are suitable for extroverts. Mm. And don't get me wrong, I don't regret that because I picked up a lot of skill set to be able to do that. But then when I learned about myself more, I realized that, hey, I, I, I'm actually an introvert. And so I brought out a lot of that side of me that I perhaps didn't explore. So if you stuck with the extrovert identity so, you know, you held on so tightly, I wouldn't have explored this other side of me, yeah. which is the listening side, which is the, a lot of the em, 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 empathy side. Empathizing side? Yeah, empathizing <laughs> side. And... Coaching really brought that side out, out of me. Mm -hmm. And so when I talk about exploring different identities, you're also exploring different parts of you that maybe you didn't really explore before. And so I'm, I'm sure like Wendy also had the similar experience when it comes to like, you know, I'm sure when you were a coach, you also explored some parts of you. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think there's a lot to it that you just need to be unafraid to go explore. Yeah. And, and honestly, I'm just so grateful that, like, Ellen is here to talk to me. I felt like I'm being coached about my career as well. <laughs> and this is why you guys need to really follow Ellen on her Instagram as well. Like, I've been really digging your content. Every time I share about your content, right, I'm not just doing it because I love you as a friend. Aww. I actually feel like we need more of such content on the internet. Thank so you, you. Were, you were saying that, like... Um, technology can be a distraction to us, right? But I feel like if you actually strategize how you use technology, how you use social media, like if you follow people like Alan on your Instagram, it is good distraction. 
because it helps you to actually think about things that matters. Mm. And so I want to encourage you guys to follow Ellen on Instagram. She is at Coach Ellen Chua. Um, I'm also going to include um, her Instagram handle on the description box or the show note so you guys can follow us. Um, I feel like we've covered quite a good range of the topics that I want to discuss today and it definitely doesn't end here um, I want to let you guys know as well like I really want to have Ellen in as like a resident career coach um, slash guest for you guys like I I feel like today was a lot of me asking questions because I have a lot of questions and I didn't even cover every single one of it but I felt like we had a good flow to it is there anything else that you want to add on before we wrap up this episode yes Maybe just a message to you, whoever is listening. Mm-hmm. If you feel like there's no one that you can ask questions about in your career, or maybe you've talked to friends and family and they're giving you answers that are not serving you, then this is a really good space. This podcast is a good place for you to learn and find a community in. And I think Wendy is... She may not be a career coach, right? But she also has her own career experiences that you can leverage on. And you're not alone, yeah. right? I, we may be strangers on the internet, um, but our, hand, our hands are open, our hearts are open for you to seek help. So don't feel alone in your career. Don't feel like it's the end of the world, even if your career is in shambles. <laughs> Right, we all we all have been through that, so yeah, you're not alone. Yeah. So if you have any more questions related to career, right, I always have this form where you can request for topics or questions. So I would also include it in the show note. Um, if it's career related, then great, I can invite Ellen over again. Um, hopefully soon. We never know. Um, and you are also please welcome to message Ellen on Instagram as well. Perhaps you can also have her as your career coach if that is something that is aligned with what you are, like the season that you are in right now. So I guess that wraps up this episode today. I really, really enjoyed this conversation that we have. I was actually so nervous Same. about <laughs> having my guest over, but I felt like we really flowed very well. Yeah. It just felt like the regular coffee chat that we have. So um, for those of you who are actually watching the video podcast, this is a cafe where we actually met up at like a few months ago. Yeah. Yeah, I think we just decided to catch up one day and then... I think Wendy was like, hey, maybe I can do a podcast here one day. And I was like, yeah, sure. And then yeah, <laughs> now I we're mean, here. We manifested this. Yes. <laughs> I really love the vibe over here. It's, it's like a family park-ish and a cafe. So um, if you guys like it here, do let me know so that we can come back here for another episode as well. Okay. And we thank the weather as well. Yeah. It's so beautiful today. I cannot wait to finish my coffee and actually continue to catch up with you oh, after yeah. this. I'm excited to come back here again um, and thank you so much for listening and thank you Wendy for inviting me yes alright we'll see you in the next one goodbye